I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you, praying always with joy in my every prayer for all of you. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. I have known Jesus from a fairly early childhood, I failed him very often, and been forgiven over and over again. Uh, uh, I have no credentials at all, uh, except the one that really means most to me anyway, which is that God has chosen you. And as Paul says, he chooses the weakest things and the worst things sometimes to accomplish his major things, just so we realize it's not we who are doing anything great, but that the, the manifestation of God is taking place in us. Thomas, in your own life, you see these remaining years of your life as preparing to come home? Well, I, I hope I am home. <laughs> because what is home? It's, it's to live in God's house all the days of our lives, and that house is this participation in the divine life. Hope is in the infinite mercy and power of God, a combination that is a sure fire, you might say, <laughs> because it's, it's not relying on oneself or one's good deeds or, or uh, some uh, slug of merit from uh, some part of life. We're talking about a communion or a unity that is incomparable, that is oneness, that's inseparable. If we really trust God, we don't have a care in the world. Come, Wasn't it Bach who has a chorale, Come Sweet Death? <laughs> well, it is sweet when it's perceived as, as the last barrier to uh, the total immersion or loss of self in God or death in God. And the uh, fullness of life in this expansion of spaciousness that is, is, uh, is the, the home of everything that is, uh, that is good. Wonderful, just to get through each day. So it amuses me how people think I look so well. <laughs> Who are they talking about? You know, that's my reaction. Maybe it's your spiritual side that's showing. I, well, I don't think I have a spiritual side like that. The, the spirit works, but sometimes in the, the worst of instruments. I'm always saying goodbye to everybody, but I keep seeing them because I <laughs> haven't quite <laughs> reached the end. It's just very more and more difficult to live longer. People think it's a great benefit. That it's relative. <laughs> nice to live longer, but it's it's. I, I love that Buddhist concept, everything is impermanent. Effortlessness becomes much more 
the main practice of your uh, contemplative life, which doesn't mean you do nothing, but but you you don't think up things to do for yourself. You sort of let it happen. So uh, the the best means of doing God's will is is a interior habit and disposition that takes a long time to develop of uh, effortlessness. Uh, another word for it is emptying. Uh, another word might be detachment. Or a uh, phrase that intrigues me is, is becoming nothing. So if you want to save your life, you will bring yourself to ruin. But anyone who brings himself or herself to nothing will find out who they are. Nothingness really is who God is, meaning infinite possibilities. So it's, it's really the stepping stone to resurrection. Annihilating or letting go of the self. Annihilating is not a popular word no, today. No, it isn't. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, you could give, you could use that word as the title of my next set of... <laughs> Annihilation? <laughs> yes, how to be annihilated and to love it. Nobody thinks of you anymore. You're forgotten, unwanted, unconsulted. Uh, defeats, failures, humiliations, rejections, all of these things are, are treasures <laughs> um, planned by God with great love as stepping stones in this transformative process to deepen our surrender. People could say, well, if you let God do it, nothing will happen. On the contrary, I think if you let God do it, everything will happen. I meditate at least four hours a day, and perhaps five, and then I'm trying to be in, in the presence of the presence uh, all the rest of the time. where I, I don't want to do anything except that God's will, and, and that may be nothing, but nothing is one of the greatest activities there is. <laughs> it takes a surprising amount of time. And, uh, and so that's the direction I'm interested in and what time is left. Each day is an opportunity, I, I hope, for God to take over my life more completely on every level and in every detail. This is an extraordinary life, a marvelous universe. And the fact that it's plagued with evil manifests how humble God is that he lets his creation uh, get into such messes from time to time to allow anything to happen, but with always the same purpose of finally getting us to allow him to love us. I think the centering prayer really includes any effort at interior silence in the presence of God that evokes our more and more of our total surrender to that presence. As consent becomes more complete, it's, it's more surrender. And you could call it just, say, surrendering to love, if you prefer. As prayer develops, the less you do, the more God does. And when you feel attracted, maybe you could do it a little longer. Especially as you 
get over 75. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't play golf all day. So that's what long life is for, I guess, to detach you from everything else you can do. So you finally uh, agree to let God take over more and more. He's invited us to be become his most intimate companions and sharers of the divine nature and does everything possible to get us there. So there's no question of God's intention. The issue is whether we'll consent. The spiritual life is all about doing what we all have to do anyway at death, but doing it sooner because it will enable our actions to be much more effective. The fullness of redemption is, is the capacity to be completely transformed, to consent to the taking over, you might say of our entire being by the divine goodness. Centering prayer. I think it's increasing. I think it's burgeoning. And I think after my demise, it, it is likely to uh, grow significantly even more. I don't know why, it's just the nature of things. The seed has to fall into the ground and die for its full energies to be. So whatever gifts I've received, it hopefully will be continued by, by, through divine providence, perhaps in ways that we don't foresee. the essential contribution of the Centering Prayer Movement is a, a simple a structure to provide ongoing renewal of the original experience through uh, workshops, books, tapes, and especially retreats. Retreats, yes. Uh, that if people continue doing they continue to grow. It's God's will to give us this grace, and that's my conviction. And for that, I'm prepared to complete my, my little uh, visit to Earth here, wherever I came from. <laughs>
So, from God's perspective, I have great confidence in the future that God's love will triumph over every obstacle. But it seems like he wants to try out every obstacle or let it happen so that nobody in the end will ever consider that it came from any place else. And that's all we have to do ultimately, accept his love. It's receiving the compassion of divine mercy and letting it flow uh, onto others and doing this uninterruptedly <laughs> that uh, is the transformation that is really substantial. It is right that I should think this way about all of you because I hold you in my heart. You who are all partners with me in grace. In my affirmation or blessing, I want to thank everyone who has undertaken the transformative process and centering prayer in particular. May the next years see the increase of centering prayer and, uh, and the creative addition of other uh, wisdom aspects that might enhance what we're doing or at least uh, help us to do what we have learned uh, out of our tradition with complete commitment. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception, to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Let us uh, enjoy the presence of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and uh, allow ourselves to be loved unconditionally and so be inspired to meet the real needs of everyone in the human family, past, present and to come. <laughs>